thank you. Ultimate respect, you. Okay, so we are here today um, with Random, aka Mega Ran. Hey, it's just Mega Ran now. Yes. I know it's confusing. No random anymore. No random anymore? Nah, no? that's just too hard to keep up with. But you had an album I don't think I'm that big was enough to random. have two names. But it's Mega Ran, the artist, presents the album called Random. It represents full circle. Ten years ago, well almost ten years, it'll be ten years next year, Random put out an album called Mega Ran. And now, Mega Ram puts out an album called Random. It's a full circle of growth. I see. Okay, so there we go. So we've got, like, Mega Ram here today. Um, yeah. He's given me permission to give him a nice little interview before bedtime because he's staying here for the night. Which well, is great. it is late. I am full <laughs> and, uh, and a little intoxicated, so this might be an interesting interview. Yes. We've basically just come back from a concert... Um, Seeing actually one of his friends and another artist from the same area. Yeah. Uh, do you want to give him a shout out? Futuristic, what up? And, you know, it was a great, great gig. And um, basically the the whole point of this video, as part of Mega Ran Week on my channel, I wanted to basically do, instead of the, the vloggy thing that I usually do, is have a nice little interview with him and talk about exactly, what, four years after I first initial interview, what you've been up to, what, you know, what's been going on? Wow. Um... This is a good time to answer that because it's the end of the year and this is definitely my busiest year like as a professional musician. Um, I feel really good about what's happened. I've toured, man, a good one third of the year. We were just doing all the, the math and um, I'm over 100 shows this year, mm -hmm. which means a third of the year, every third day at least, I'm, I'm playing a gig. Cats are walking on. Yeah, the, we're, uh, we're looking at cats walking on the laptop. Cats right now. are on the keyboard. On, on the keyboard. Get get away from the keyboard, kitty. Get away from the keyboard. She's on the keyboard right keyboard now. Keyboard kitty. <laughs> <laughs> but um, honestly, it's been it's been my biggest year, and I uh, and I, it's just all about just growth. And I was even talking to Futuristic about it. It's just mm. make it every year better than the previous. And I think we're gonna have a lot to top this year. I didn't even put out a full length release. We did the uh, Matt Mania. You know, kept the podcast going strong. Um, and uh, Random Beats, my company, has put out a number of releases. Sky Blue, uh, K Murdoch's release is coming soon. We also did our first video game. We did uh, Tales of the Elements on Steam. I'll be reviewing that for a rather British review this week. So nice. check that out. So so we moved into some new forms of media, and I'm really excited about that. And and again, it's all about this growth, you know? And I think that uh, we've been able to step into some new areas, and uh, and that's when been my goal. So... Next year's back to the music a little more. I'm planning at least one full length release. Uh, it's been a year and a half since my last one, so I'm ready to get back in the lab. I got a lot to say, especially with things happening in America in general. I feel like um, my perspective, you know, as a as a nerd and as a black man, I feel like uh, this is the time I think where mm. I'm comfortable enough to finally speak up uh, about you know about my perspective on things. So. It'll be really interesting. And also to think about as well, you were actually in consideration for a Grammy, which is a big deal. It's pretty crazy. Um, there were 56 albums considered for the Best Rap Album Grammy and a lot more for... Um, actually, the song Mighty, the Mighty Number no. 9 track we did, was considered for a soundtrack for Visual Media yeah. Award. So so two categories, we were, we were in the running, which is incredible you know granted yeah. we didn't get the nomination but like mm. um just to be able to be considered makes me feel really good an album that basically three people worked on you know it's me murdoch and matt weiss storyville like shout out storyville he's did, an know, amazing producer the guy's phenomenal so basically just the three of us together just sitting down and just trying to make the best mega ran album we could make and uh and for it to get that kind of consideration is amazing so it just lets you know you're doing it the right way like next time we're taking it home that's all yeah and you have to excuse us we've got cats running around the room right now they've got such fascination with cats them it's taking over yeah they, they just got such a fascination with mega ran at the moment that they just want to like play with him um so on that note on that note you're, you've been touring loads you've had um interviews with, like the nerdist you've had articles on kotaku about you you're in loads of print and internet media You've basically blown up in terms of nerd culture. 
you know, you're kind of one of the the, the prime examples of nerd culture kind of exploding mm. everywhere. How do you stay so relevant? I think it's a matter of just keeping, never putting all your eggs in one basket, you know, and, and, and focusing on so many different things. Um, I think the Patreon campaign helped me out a lot this year, allow me to be creative and also to be um, challenging, you know, and I mm -hmm. feel like that's an important thing. And so Stranger Things came out, I binge watched it, did a song about it. Next thing you know, it's on AV Club and all these really great websites and Millie Bobby Brown is retweeting it, you know, the girl who plays Eleven. So, so cool things have happened just from managing to stay relevant, stay on the pulse of what's happening in the in the nerd world, you know. I had a good friend, Lynx Kinetic, the producer of Mad Mania, who hit me up and was like, you gotta watch Stranger Things. And so then I did, and I loved it, and then I had a great director, Christian Coda, say, I wanna shoot a video for it. So, just I think when you're doing things the right way, you will run into people who are talented, who want to help you out. Like you. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, but yeah, it's the, it's the weirdest thing when it comes to like watching you grow as an artist. Like I've been there from the beginning, in, in a sense, from when you started touring London. Um, and when you were kind of a, like a... You were a relevant name, but you weren't as relevant as you are now, I think. And I'm still pretty irrelevant. No, no, no. I disagree. I think there's a lot of growth there. And also, yes. like, if we're thinking about you being on Up, Up, Down, Down as well, which is oh, another yeah. YouTube channel. I'm giving WWE free publicity in this You're video. You're doing a lot of free pub, a lot free of shout-outs. Free shout-outs um, to everyone. shout-out to Xavier Woods, since we're talking about it, uh, Austin Creed. Uh, my good buddy Eric, who runs Nerds Clothing, has just landed a, a series of shirts with WWE and uh and Xavier wore it this week on Raw, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, he gave him a lot of plug and kind of helped yeah, he helped cultivate out big his time. business with he's that. Been, he's been he? been wearing the nerd shirts on up, up, down, down since the beginning. Mm. And uh and he said, One day man, I'm gonna get you on T V and he did. He did it. He made him a up up down down shirt that's really cool eight bit style. And he rocked it on Raw. So he did it man. Like one thing I can say, like I've known, you know, Austin for a while too. And he always said, like, man, if I ever get a moment, a chance to help you out, I'm going to do it, you know. And I still remember him in NXT and telling me, yo, I got the call. Going up the Raw, man. I'm going up the Raw. I hope this works. And then I, he's like, they gave me a gimmick. It's called New Day. I don't know if this is going to work. But, <laughs> but it sounds kind of ridiculous. But we'll see what happens. And then, you know, it starts off one way. It takes its own life on. Yeah, I think it becomes they... something great. If they continued it the way that the WWE had originally planned it, it wouldn't have worked. No, no. I think, but they were able to adjust, and I yeah. think that's something that all musicians and content creators are going to need to learn how to do. And it's funny, we make that comment like, oh, Vince McMahon's out of touch and this and that. Somebody there told him to switch that New Day gimmick around and, and alter it a little bit. And maybe it was the guys themselves. And somebody listened, and they made it work, because it would have fallen flat. Yeah, it's the know? nuances, isn't it, when it comes to... Um, anything that you go into there's always that one ear listening or that one person seeing you do something like if someone didn't catch John Cena having a rap battle with Rey Mysterio the gimmick of John Cena would never have been born you know yep. he would have been out the door like the way that they first impressioned him and <laughs> Vince hated John Cena so that's that's another little bit of history on there but mm. enough about the wrestling things um, mm. so in terms of yourself do you think that you're gonna at any point they'll basically because they, they, they've started to embrace chiptune in yeah, a way. I feel like video games have some... I don't know. It's like someone this year realized that wrestling fans also like video games. Yeah. And and they've been doing so much video game crossover content between the WWE 2K, between TJ Perkins' interest theme. Um, which I love his favorite. It's great. Yeah. And um, the, the Cruiserweight Classic graphic style, which was very video game, Mortal Kombat fighting game style. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's like they maybe they got a new imaging person who was just like, video games works. Or a complete nerd. Yeah, they just hired a nerd uh, <laughs> or something because it, it works. And um, I think it's great. I think that more pieces of culture are realizing that nerds run the world, man. And uh, if you don't get with them, not necessarily like placate and pander to them, but but at least acknowledge their existence. You know, I think that you have to acknowledge the nerd because the nerd spends money and the nerd is very passionate about things that they love yeah and like you know if you look at the the biggest directors out there jj abrams huge nerd 
without guys like him, you'd never have a new Star Trek film series. You never would have the new Star Wars film series. How do you come feel out. about him doing Star Trek and Star Wars? Is that like just unfair? He's producing Star Trek, but I believe he directed one Star Wars movie and he's his hands he's off done. now. Because okay. they, apparently they don't want to keep one director on the same franchise. They, what mm. Disney are trying to do is switch directors up. Um, so I they appreciate don't make the same that. Mistake. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But that's 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 the big thing here, and um, I think in terms of you, in terms of the way that you're creatively exploring yourself, where you know where do you see yourself heading into 2017? Well, I want to get back into being the artist, the creator that stays on the cutting edge of what's hot and what's what's new and what's what needs to be talked about. Uh, I spent a lot of time touring, and when I tour, I don't get to record as much, um, and so I did a lot of that. I was more playing the background, like kind of CEO style, not Suge Knight or Puffy, but more the hands-on CEO who just lets people create great things. And um, You're the more you understanding know, CEO. You're a little the guy more who hangs people out the window. I don't hang people out the window. I've never heard horror stories about you doing that uh, yet. No, I, I have not done that. <laughs> so we put out the Last Benevolence Project, which was a game and an album. We put out Sky Blue, K. Murdoch. So this is the busiest year for me as a non, just, you know, artist. So... I'm definitely looking forward to getting back into being a rapper again and creating. You know, I think rap is in a really cool place, you know, where there's on one side, there's rappers who don't rap well on purpose. And on the other side, there's rappers who are continuing to to push the bar. So I want to be somewhere in the middle and lean towards creating something that's amazing that those kids can listen to and enjoy as well as older fans who will be like, yo, this is some good stuff. Like I remember, you know, mm. showing them that it's still good. Do you think we have a culture of people like um, right now who have just basically embraced the the monotony in a sense? Because if you said about rappers that don't rap, yes, what is that? I don't know, man. It's really weird. It's become a new thing. I think just the general apathy of the world has finally hit entertainment. I don't know where it's like. I think people just want something that sounds different and interesting, you know, and that's why that guy designer blew up with the panda thing, I think, sounding interesting, you know, he doesn't even fully pronounce his words, so it becomes intriguing, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that a studio let him walk out doing this, you know, so that audacity to create in the face of all the people who are going to be like, you suck, so that makes us intrigued by it, it's, mm. it's kind of strange, you know. So it's, it's like, like a, a person of its own. Self. Yeah, it's like a person who wears his pants backwards outside. You'd be like, "That guy's weird," but let me take a picture of him with my cell phone. Chris you know? Cross can make you. Or yeah, I mean, or a guy walks out with two different pairs of shoes, or or his socks on the outside of his shoes, and you're like, "Okay, this is a weirdo." But hey, man, hey, hey, do you see that weird guy? Hey, hey, look at that weird guy. Hey, it becomes a and fashion thing, statement. And the next thing you know, everyone's looking at the weird guy. So I think it pays to be weird in that sense. So if you can make something that can interest a rap fan in 2016, then you're doing something right. So it's a challenge, though, because you want to maintain artistic integrity. Mm. You never want to hop on to what someone else is doing. Uh, you know, I think the, the basics, you know, basic rule 101 in hip hop is no biting, all original. So, so you know, you just keep it, keep it to yourself and, and you create the next thing, you know, and you find a way to do it differently. You can hear my mum sitting there with the cats, basically talking like cutesy to them. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you've, you're on that part. You've created, you've made like these amazing albums, these amazing concepts. You've promoted other artists. You've even got married last year as well. I did. You know? Yeah, it's been a crazy year for sure, man. And um, yeah, like I always think of what's next. Like I got to top what I've done. So, you know, we did a lot of touring. Uh, me and MC Lars are working on an album together. I, I I'll love be you working guys. On a yeah. Solo. Um, I think what we do well is storytelling, and also, um, you know, show our influence of, of literature. And I think no one's doing that right now. It's not cool to read anymore. So we want to be well-read folks and, and make sure that people know it's cool to be smart. Mm. And I think that's what what we want to create. Next. So how many legs have you got left on this tour? Uh, on the next? Are you gonna like finish up the European tour, go home for a bit, and then? Spend uh, Christmas and, and then go back out again? I'm going out for New Year's. I'm just playing one show at a convention in uh, Portland, Oregon. Portland? And then uh, MAGFest the first week of January. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be home just working on this album until our next tour with Lars in March starts. 
Tickets are actually available right now. Go to nerdcoretour.com. And also, guys, <coughs> uh, make sure you check out you know Mega Rand's merch. I've been showing and exhibiting my Mega Rand merch. I'm not wearing it in this video <laughs> for shame. No promotion shame. there. For shame. Uh, so make sure that you go to megaranmusic.com. Mm -hmm. I tried to get that out, didn't couldn't get that out, so I'll say it again. Megaranmusic.com. Uh, it's also megaranmerch.com, which will send you straight to my merch page. There you go. Yeah. And uh, you can buy like all the, the accessories and merch, Megaran related. Buy. And there's also special like deals and discounts and stuff that they do as well on the altercation. So make sure that you all get those. Yes. And check out his Bandcamp page as well uh, for that on top. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it from us. I'm going to let him get some sleep. Of course, he's got a busy day tomorrow. I do. Um, but, yeah, add me, check me out on Twitter and all that. It's Meg Ryan. It looks like Meg Ryan because it's really close together. But but it's not. It's, it's Meg Ryan, not <laughs> Meg Ryan. Facebook page as well. Check out <laughs> him on everything. Uh, if you check me out on VidMe, YouTube, of course, as well, check Meg Ryan out on all his endeavors and his pages. Make sure, guys, that you promote, promote, promote. Share with your friends, PR. If there is a concert in your area that has Mega Ran, or if there's a concert promoter that is interested, send him your way. He's very accessible to people, and it'll be nice to basically let him know where he can tour, where he can go out and get these uh, promotion materials and stuff for albums and bits and pieces, and also where he can, like, you know, meet his audience, because he loves meeting his fans. That's kind of how we met, which is a weird thing. You know, following me on Twitter and stuff. Just a bit uh -huh. of a stalker. Uh, so, yeah, that's it from us, guys. And as always, as you saw... Uh, four years ago, this is Michael Burhan for Megaran himself, of course, yeah. saying that we've got gameplay. Have you?